Yo, 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 what's up, YouTube fam? It's your boy, Stevenson Lindor, back again with another training video. As always, it's the Wall Street family where we elevate, motivate, and make money daily. All right, as always, like, share, and comment on this video. And make sure you subscribe and uh, put on the notifications for any updates, man. Love you guys out there, man. I told you I'm going to be consistent this year. I'm going to keep dropping content. I'm trying to do for like two, three a week, right? If I miss any days, you know, I'm always out there working. But, you know, so far we've been consistent this year. We're going to keep this baby rocking and rolling. So, like I said, today we're going to talk about the famous Bollinger Band indicator, man. Uh, a lot of people have been asking me about this. Uh, it's actually one of the most popular indicators to utilize. And I said, all right, let me do a YouTube video, man. Cause you know, I always love to help people and we're gonna, you know, talk about how you can utilize and maximize this very indicator. So let's get into it. So as always, you're gonna go to indicators and we're gonna bring up Bollinger Band. Now, I want you guys to understand something. See there, Bollinger Bands? See how you have different variations of the indicator? Listen, they're all relative. And what I mean by that is at the end of the day, it's only useful based on your knowledge on the market. So for example, I'm gonna give you this scenario, this analogy, let's say mathematics, right? Let's say you're given a tool, like a calculator, all right? You're given a regular calculator and then you're given a scientific calculator. The difference between the two, obviously, with the scientific calculator, it's a little more advanced. It can do a little bit more, right? It has more components than a regular one. But at the end of the day, one plus one on the regular one is two. One plus one on the advanced one is two. See, if you don't have a ground uh, foundation on mathematics, the calculator is not useful. So it doesn't matter which Bollinger Band um, indicator you use. Do you understand the chart? Now, the more you understand the chart, the more this tool is going to be useful to you. So always remember that. You know, you guys know I like to use the MACD, um, you know, Fibonacci. It doesn't matter. If your strength on the chart is not up to par, the indicator does not matter. So let's get right to it. All right. So the Bollinger Band, what exactly is the Bollinger Band, guys? So the Bollinger Band consists of a band, three components, right? See, one, two, three. All right, three lines which are plotted in relation to security prices. All right, so the line in the middle, I'm gonna highlight that. This line in the middle right here, all right, is usually a simple moving average, all right, with a set period of 20 days, as you can see right there. See, BB20, right? And obviously you can change it. So what does the 20 represent? It represents the last. 20 trading days in the market, right? Kind of like a regular moving average. When you add that, you know, it says nine period, right? Um, it factors the last nine trading days. So real simple, real easy, all right? The type of trend line and period can always be changed by the trader. So you can adjust it, right? And again, some people might put it up to 50. Some might, people might put it up to nine. It all depends on you. At the end of the day, to me, it's all relative. All right, it's how you do it. All right, so um, I like to usually, whenever indicator that I use, honestly, I don't like to uh, modify, right, the settings. I just kind of leave it there, right? So the 20 period is the most common, it's the most popular uh, used on the Bollinger Band. So I see no reason to change it. All right, again, what's your knowledge on the market before you factor in uh, this indicator? So, we're going to see how we can use this indicator and make ourselves more productive, more profitable when trading in the market. So, for example, it's going to be a simple, easy video right here. So the Bollinger Band basically lets you know when it's pretty much clear to buy or sell. So, for example, as you can see, when price closes below the 20 moving period, you're looking for a sell. When price closes above it, you're looking for a buy. Right when price goes outside of the Bollinger Band, like here, it's kind of pretty much giving you an indication that price is overbought and is looking to reverse. All right, every time price closes above, like it pops out outside of the Bollinger Band, whether it's above or below. Right, so for example, here, pretty much price is getting ready to reverse. Now, that's just the basic general information, you can't just run off of that. 
right? Don't think, oh, well, every time price closes above or below, right, the SMA, I can buy or sell. No, 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 no. That's how you can hurt yourself. All right. I tell people all the time, if that's all you're running off of, you will lose. So for example, if I bought the moment price went above the Bollinger Band here, as you can see, it went down. If I sold the moment the Bollinger Band went underneath the moving average, as you can see, price went up. So it takes more than that. You have to have a strategy. When using indicators, guys, there must be a strategy in conjunction with the indicator you use. So watch this. So for example, today we had this GA buy set up, right? And just to let you guys know, we were actually looking at this in our community. All right. Again, guys, I probably have the best community out there. Seriously. All right. I always measure every teacher success based on their students and the success of them. Right. And look at my team out here, man. They winning. Loving it, winning, 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 man. Keep the team paid and profitable. So one of the trades that we were analyzing was GA and GN. As you can see here, see the date, right? Boom, March 4th, March 4th. We don't cap around here, right? So we're going to go over GA and GN. So check this out. Hold on real quick. So, all right, right back. So check this out. We were looking for this buy here, right? We had this nice impulse, this nice correction, all right? So when price came to this retest level and a retest for those of you who don't know, is basically when price, right, makes a breakout. So you see how price broke out to the upside here, all right? It broke out, it broke this structure. And then price comes to retest that level. After it comes to retest that level, you're looking for that move to break out to the upside, all right? So check this out. Notice when price came to retest and it wasn't breaking that previous low, all right? Your indication to get into the trade was literally the moment price crossed over the SMA, there was your buy. There was your confirmation for a buy. So unlike the moving averages where you have to wait for the double cross of the EMAs, the good thing about the Bollinger Band is literally the moment price closes above or below, you're good. Because again, we've already done our due diligence, right? We had a break of structure. Right, we had a break of structure right here. So price exploded to the upside. It broke above this high. Look at my MACD, right? And that's the beauty. I use this in conjunction with my MACD. Then price came and retest that level. The moment it closed above, there was my buy. My entry would have been here, stop loss below. And as you can see, boom, I'm off to the run, right? Same thing down here on GN, boom, look at that. See, I'm letting you guys look at my markup. Oh yeah, All right? And just to prove it again, cause you know, you got those YouTubers out there. Oh nah, they're just analyzing something that already happened. They didn't predict that. It's always easy to just go back. Oh no, 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 right? You can look up at my markups, right? This was posted literally Yesterday, not yesterday, actually on Tuesday. Look at that, March 2nd. So let's go look at that GM. All right. Oh, your boy doesn't cap. Oh, wait for that breakout. Wait for that retest. Look for that buy, 193,200. What's current price of GN right now? 193,700. So I think I know what I'm doing, right? So look at how we use GN in conjunction with the Bollinger Band. So we had this strong move up, right? Price actually closed above this structure here, right? 
right? The moment body closes above or below a certain level, a certain structure, all you got to do is wait for that retest. Price pulled back. And literally, the moment when price pulled back, you had that retest. You can start looking for your buy the moment price closes above your SMA. Closes above your SMA, put your stop loss below, and then boom, there's your move to the upside. Now, some of you guys are wondering, well, hey, Steve, if I'm on the one hour, I see price pulled up. But yeah, but then it pulled back, especially on a pair like G and, you know, the spreads are high and you really want a good entry. So I'm about to give you a nice little tip right here. You guys want to jump down to a smaller time frame. So this is what I mean. So basically, when price is retesting on a higher time frame, like the one hour, and you're ready to look for that buy or that sell. So in this situation, I'm getting ready for that buy. I want to jump down to a smaller time frame, right? 15 minute, hell, you can even go down to the five minute or the one minute. And guess what? Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to look for the same rules that I utilize to get into the trade on the smaller time frame. So for example, right? Look right here on my MACD, price crosses over, goes up. I see that price doesn't break that previous high. So I don't buy just yet. Right, I need a break of structure. Now I need that same break of structure on the smaller time frame. Boom. Price crosses over right here. Look at their MACD. Look how it's in conjunction. So when it crossed over, boom. Now guess what? It broke this previous high. So now at this point, all I got to do is wait for the retest, which was right down here. As soon as I get that cross, Price crossing over that SMA on the Bollinger Band. Entry here. Stop loss below. And then guess what? Right? Even though this pulled back, I still had my buy to the upside. Because you know why? Even if I would have, let's say I would have entered here and placed my stop loss there. Of course, I would have equivalently got stopped out. But because this is still part of the structure on the higher time frame and price didn't break this previous low, definitely didn't break this correction down here, I can still look for that buy. So let's say I get taken now, all right? I double check to make sure everything is still in place. As soon as price crosses back over again, I'm gonna jump back in for a buy. So I'm gonna get another entry here, place my stop loss, and then boom. So look at that. If I would have entered here, placed my stop loss below, I would have lost about 32 pips, right? Now, Price crossed back up. I'm risking about another 30, 40 pips, but look at my move to the upside. I make up for that earlier loss of 32 pips because I got back in. So now I just want 147 pip move, right? I want 147 pip move. Mind you, your original entry would have probably been somewhere down here. But if not, if just following the rules again, waiting for all that, waiting for the rules, waiting for that break of structure, that retest before jumping back in, I'm still catching 147 pip move to the upside, right? So I make up for that 32 pip loss, right? So minus 32 from that 147. I'm still walking away with 111 pip move, right? And this is another way that you guys can use the Bollinger Band in your strategies, right? Just look at this. Perfect example. Today in the market, gold drop. Look at that. Price came down, came in retest. When it came in retest, literally, I could stay on the one hour time frame. And as soon as price closed below the 20 moving average, there's my sell. If I want a sooner entry, I can just jump down to a smaller time frame. Right. And now I catch the train early, place my stop loss above. Right. You always want a tight entry with a tight stop loss. And then you go to the higher time frame for your bigger reward. And then ta-da, you got a nice move to the downside. Look at that. Look at that, guys. Look at your risk to reward on that. Look at the pips. Right. So this is just another video I wanted to cut showing you guys how you can use 
different indicators within your strategy. Hopefully you guys got value out of this. Definitely leave some comments below, right? I didn't want to make this too technical, too complicated, but it's just another way for you guys to analyze and um, the market. And now instead of some of you guys using moving averages, you might convert over to Bollinger Band because it might be a little simpler and easier for you. So as always, guys, I love pouring into you, man. I love sharing nuggets. Definitely, definitely subscribe, like, share, and comment. If you want to join the team, hit me up, shoot me a DM on Instagram, or send me a message uh, via email, man. All my information is below, guys. I'll be dropping another video in a couple days. Definitely, I got some dope content coming for you guys. As always, your boy, Stevenson Linder, Wall Street Family, where we motivate, elevate, and make money daily. I'm out.